Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my channel. Today I have four tutorials for Index Card A Day 2020. One of the prompts for this week was emerald green. And so I decided that I'm going to do all kind of green and blue. And I find working in that fashion really helps me focus. So I pulled out some of the gel prints that are all green and blue. And I'm starting with that. This one, as soon as I saw this gel print, I thought Earth, the world. And so I grabbed some of my a focal image that I have a world that is in a heart shape, which led me to thinking, you know, it's a small world after all. So I grabbed this stencil from the Crafters Workshop. And I will list the stencils that I used in the gel prints, as well as the stencils that I've used um, in any upper layers in the description box below. And you can get those stencils at ninniesnapkins.com. She has all a lot of the TCW six inch stencils as well as the TCW Shopify store. And the links of, and discount codes are in the description box below. So let's get back to this iCAD. I am using the blue. I wanted to add a little more contrast to this and I'm using Prussian blue. Now I had, because that world was in a heart shape, I went to my file folder and got out those die cuts that were in heart shape and I just put those down. Here I'm looking at my sentiment pack, my short and sweet sentiment pack, and I'm pulling some ones about love. Choose love and love wins. So this is what I mean when I talk about having your stash. You have sentiments all ready to go. You have gel prints ready to go. You have focal images ready to go. And so the actual putting together of, the, of your page becomes relatively simple and quicker. Which is what I want the Index Card A Day Challenge to be. So I'm edging this focal image. Now, I got this. I think it was a free printable. It was in my stash. Go on Google, Heart Shape World. Um, where, you know, you can even cut a heart shape and put some watercolor on it to resemble the world. And make it your own and using the colors. So I'm cutting these die cuts so I can kind of link them together. And that was actually waste. I was cutting out hearts for, I think, making mini composition books. I wanted the inside of the heart for that. And these were the throwaway parts that I thought, huh, maybe someday I can use them. And today, that was the day. So I did struggle a little bit trying to get these to line up and link properly and get them all glued down. But, you know, persistence. So I'm gluing them together a little bit with the glue stick and then I go back in afterwards and apply the gel medium or matte medium fluid. I'm not sure, oh, they're fluid, fluid medium I used. So that short and sweet sentiment pack has lots of different phrases, you know, one, two, four, five word phrases that you can use singly or, you know, mix and match. And they're perfect for doing smaller pages or mixing and matching and having multiples on a larger, a larger page. So you can see how I shaded on the bottom already and the top ones aren't shaded. And you can see the difference that makes. Now, when you are doing something like an iCAD challenge, this is the perfect opportunity to really practice your finishing skills, your shading, you know, because it's short, sweet projects, but 
as you can see, the finishing really bumps it up. Now, remember, I glued this down with the fluid matte medium, and that gave it a good coat and it sealed the paper. And that's important when I come to shading. If I hadn't sealed the paper, that would have bled into the paper and made the hearts look dirty. Also, if I make a mistake here, I can grab a baby wipe and it will be able to be removed because I've sealed it with the fluid matte medium. So it, it does, it glues it down, but it also seals the paper and gives you options down the road. And here I'm shading the outside edge. If you're practicing the floating acrylic technique, using, using it on the edge is a good place to start because it's very forgiving and allows you to get comfortable with that skill. I'm grabbing my fine line applicator here and just edging my page. This just finishes it off. Giving it a quick dry because it does come out in a, it's thicker and it takes a little bit of time. And I'm going around with the fine line applicator around the sentiments as well. And if the sentiments aren't cut perfectly straight, this kind of hides any problem. And here's a close up of the finished first iCAD. I love it. The earth tones just really appeal to me. I have one more of that gel print. We'll see if that shows up in an iCAD video as well. So when I pulled green, blue focal images, I came across my starfish. These are jelly print starfish that I had cut out for another project that didn't get used. So I'm just using the floating acrylic technique and I'm edging them to see how much I can pop off of a background. And I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, so I do multiples. Here's what I know. If I don't use it on this iCAD, it goes back into my stash and it'll be just that much more ready the next for the next project. So I grabbed, this was a brayered off page. When I was gel printing, I just brayered off these colors onto this page. And I'm thinking, you know, because it's a blue green and I grabbed it, I've decided that's my color scheme for this. And I'm throwing them on there, looking and seeing how do I like it. So again, this is a perfect way to practice your floating acrylic technique on an open edge like this. And if you're doing it on acrylic paint, it's permanent. So I'm liking that look, but I think, oh, I need to add something to the background. Now I could have just used, glued it down on that brayered background, but I grabbed this script dot stencil and I'm adding white acrylic paint through it. Then I grab some darker colors because it's not giving me where I want to go, what the vision is that I have in my head. And I'm not really liking how that's, that stencil's working. So I grab this Ripple stencil, also from the Crafters Workshop, and I'm using some blues, some whites. I'm mixing it on the sponge. I'm getting darks and I'm getting lights. And, oh, it kind of makes me think of the water, the ripples of the water. So I'm really liking that effect. So now I'm moving the stencil and re-stenciling areas. And this is giving me a real layered look. And I'm, I, I'm really liking what's happening here. And I decide that I'm only good. The page is only big enough for one starfish. I wanted to put more, but I'm thinking, nope, in the end, I'm just going with one. And I cut out the sentiment, I typed it out, played with my word art, not all stars belong to the sky. Taking pictures, seeing 
what the orientation is. And then I decide, I look back at the pictures and I decide I like this one better. Or I like this one. And it just gives you a different view. So if you're unsure, that's a great way to figure things out. So making a decision, I glue it down with my fluid map medium. Now, in, now that some of it's done, I want a little bit more contrast in some places. So I grab that stencil and I'm just adding another layers. I'm adding lights or darks, just bumping it up. There, I'm adding some lights and more of a layered effect. Now that I have the focal images down, now that the sentiment's down, I can tweak the other parts. So you can always come back and add details. Adding a little bit more shading. Here I'm adding highlights, I'm adding lights. So I'm using the floating acrylic technique with white. Going around the edge with black. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching my video and please go over to Instagram and follow me at Creative Katie. Often you'll see what I'm creating ahead of time. And my email address is in the description box below if you're interested in finding out about the short and sweet sentiment pack or any of the other sentiment packs that I have available for sale. Now I just got to add some bling and I'm splattering with gold here. I have the gold thinned and I keep it in a little container. Using my gel Secure a glaze gel pen, which is permanent when it's dry. And here is the second index card. Love and love that brayered background. So definitely in the zone. So I'm pulling all my gel prints, my blue, my green. I found this focal image of it's an avocado that's made into a star or a um, snowflake, and I'm just trying it out on different ones. I grabbed some other gel prints just to see what kind of background really will set off the snowflake. So I decide that really none of the gel prints that I have on the pages works. So I grabbed some of the yellow green and hooker's green and some gesso and I'm just throwing it on the card. I'm starting from a blank page from my old happy planner. Going to add some texture and some interest to the background with this coastal escape stamp. Now I'm brushing the blue on here, keeping it wet, working pretty quickly, and I'm gonna take this kaleidoscope stencil and remove the paint through the stencil. I'm hoping this is gonna give me a background that works. And I'm not really happy with the blue-green percentage. So I attempt to do it again, this time I do blue and I paint the green on top. And I'm going to come back and remove the stencil 
Remove the paint through the stencil. And I like this one better, but there's not enough contrast to show off that snowflake. And I give it a, I kind of go over it with the blue and it suddenly reminds me of brocade fabric. Now brocade fabric is prompt from last week and it is rich colors with usually um, with gold or silver. So I grabbed this snowflake stencil. This is one of the Crafters Workshop cake and cookie stencils, which I use in my crafting. And I'm stenciling with the gold. And it's making for, it looks like brocade fabric. So sometimes while last week I didn't have an idea of how to use brocade, I keep those, some of those prompts in mind. And I don't care if I do it in the week that it was given or later on. So this fabric really shows off that snowflake that I cut out of a magazine. And I then I type out, we are all like snowflakes, unique and one of a kind. Play with the orientation, cutting in the sentiment apart. Now I'm gluing it down. Now, this snowflake was cut from a magazine and it was a very flimsy magazine and when I glued it down it wrinkled which I don't worry too much about but it lost some of its vividness and while when it dries it, some of that came back I wasn't completely happy with it but that is you runs the risk so I'm edging this with gold, my brocade background. This is gold in my fine line bottle and I have black, white, gold and Prussian blue in my bottles. Those are the colors that I tend to use the most for outlining. And again, I'm outlining the words with the gold and that just hides any, if it's just off that little bit, if it's not glued down straight, if my cutting wasn't exact, and drying it. Now I put some clear gesso on top of this snowflake and I'm using the floating acrylic technique. I'm trying to bring back some vividness and I'm using green here to just put back some color there. And I like how that worked. That's adding a little bit more oomph to my focal image. And I use the clear gesso on it because I wanted to make sure that that magazine paper that was so absorbent was really sealed. Now I left it like that and this was several days later. I decided I'm going to add a little more contrast. I grabbed my fine line applicator with my white and I'm going around all the elements of this. And this really turns it more like a snowflake. It's a little bit dimensional. And it just adds that contrast and again, makes this focal image stand out. So even when you think you're done, sometimes you're not. Now, if you don't have a fine line applicator, you can use a Uniball Signo white or a white glaze pen. I decide to fill these in. Remember, you can adjust whatever you start with the magazine picture. And now I'm just making it my own. I'm adding a little more white. It's making it a little more snowflake-like. 
and then I filled the center of it. So here's a close up of this. And I absolutely love this one kind of fought me a little bit, but I absolutely love, love, love how it ended up from the background, the brocade background, and the adding the white on the magazine snowflake. So there are the three iCADs, and I grabbed this other gel print that I use some mark making tools, and I grabbed this stencil because I thought it kind of reads the same. It's got that same shape. I thought, okay, I'm going to just use dark paint, my Prussian blue, and stencil on that, and maybe that will be a good base to put my focal image onto it. And I believe I was going to put a butterfly in the middle. I had a green butterfly in there. Now that wasn't, there wasn't enough contrast. There were, it just kind of butterfly got lost. So I thought, okay, I'm going to paint in some of these sections. So this is an iCAD that shows, again, how the road isn't always straight. Sometimes the journey, you know, you go through a few detours. So then I decide I'm going to add some more to it. So nothing that you do, if it doesn't work, you just keep trying. Add more color, add more stenciling. End of the day, I know I can just put a coat of gesso on here and start fresh if I needed to. So I'm still trying out butterflies, focal images. Then I just take green and go all over it. One of the prompts was emerald. I thought, okay, I'm going to go emerald green. Now I like how you see all that pattern in the background. Then I use some white paint and light paint and use this mixed media stamp from Tim Holtz. And I'm loving, loving, loving the background. I'm kind of mourning the initial background that I had because I loved it. And then I decide I'm going to use Tim Holtz's Crazy Cats. And I'm painting this cat kind of a burnt orange color because that is a complementary color to the green. So I know that it is going to really show up on that background. It's not a color that I'm using in this scheme, but it is a complementary color. This week, a lot of the prompts didn't speak to me. But like I said earlier, I keep track of the prompts and maybe next week I'm gonna come across something and it's going to inspire me in a different way. I don't fight the prompts, I go with them. I splattered with white and I splattered with the burnt orange color, burnt sienna color, to get that into the background. Then I look up and I have a piece of drywall tape there. I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna glue that down just to kind of set off the focal image and add another design element. So I stuck that down and I did put, you could put gel, glue it down with gel medium or clear gesso. You could use white gesso, but then it would be white. It would give a different look. I wanted it to be clear. I still wanted to see that green with that little bit of white mesh. So I glued the cat down and I'm using gel medium here because I've got layers and thickness. And I made a sentiment. I looked for some sassy sayings that work for cats and dogs. I'm combining or going to be creating another sentiment pack. There's no need to repeat yourself. I ignored you fine the first time, which if you've had a cat or a dog, you know. Now I'm doing some shading here and just following the stamp as to where I put the shading. And it really makes this cat pop. Floating acrylic around the outside edge. Now 
and around the sentiment. So some of these ICADs came together really easily. Other ones, not so easy, but you stick to it. I'm edging this with white because the, I just thought black was not going to add anything. And I liked the, there was lots of white in the sentiment and that made it work together. Just adding a few dots with the fine line applicator, giving it a dry. So there's my complementary colors that I used. I hope you enjoyed watching me create these four index cards. Close-ups of all of them are next. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Which one do you like the best? Follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Check out all the links in the description box. There's discount codes there as well. Bye for now. Happy creating.